My name's Chris. Hi, Chris. Um, you talked in the beginning about your religious responsibility that you felt like you had to live up to in, in maybe your culture or your, the church that you were in. Yeah. Um, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of denominations out there, and everybody has a different way of doing things. And I read one time in um, the author of Blue Like Jazz, he, he puts, I can't remember his name, but he... Donald Miller. Yeah, Donald Miller. And he puts in there um, how he doesn't even like to say that he's a Christian, so to speak, because it's taken on such a different meaning. Uh -huh. um, I thought it was peculiar in the Bible, or in, I'm sorry, in the Bible, in the shack where... Um, <laughs> Be very careful yeah. here. Man, I see it no. all over blog land. But. <laughs> Gloria Gaither told me that it was right up there. So. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, where um, Papa talks about grace and works. And I know you, you said that the book really wasn't written for Christian people, but I think that is a, a sensitive topic that, you know, the Christian people deal with in a lot of ways. Um, and with the grace and works, I think Papa was relating to, you know, some of the religious bondage, which you've kind of alluded to somewhat. Um, how do people break from any type of religious bondage, whether it be, you know, Islam all the way through, you know, what we understand as our view of Christianity? How, how do you break free of that with the control that the church puts on people? Ooh, ooh that's a nasty thought. Uh, and if you could do that in just two and a half minutes, Wayne. <laughs> yeah. Well, then we lose our radio on it. We can, we can go on without them. Um, sorry, folks. I don't think we're bright enough to break that bondage. Uh, part of the religious orientation in our lives is I want to control this. I want to make something happen. How do I do this? How do I accomplish this? The one thing we're asked to do is live inside the love of the Father through the work of the Son by the power of the Spirit. That's what we're asked to do. And uh, I think if we live inside that space, here's what I'm firmly convinced of and have seen, have seen to be true in my own life. I don't think Jesus came to start a religion called Christianity. I don't. I think Jesus came to subvert all religions by filling up in the human spirit what religion seeks to answer in our own lives. So we have, we have unfortunately, over 2,000 years, the, the believers were first called Christians in Antioch because they were acting like little Christs. It's not because they were part of a, a religion called Christianity. They just looked like Jesus. They call them Christians, like you would call people who are nuts about George Bush, Bushies or whatever. It was that kind of a pejorative even. I'm not even sure it was a compliment. But the early believers said, hey, little Christ, that sounds good to us. We're in. So they, they, started, they were calling themselves people of the way, and they went to calling themselves Christians from Antioch. And Christians meant you looked like Christ. Christians didn't mean you lined up for a 10 o'clock service on Sunday morning or you jumped through some set of hoops or you agreed with a set of 16 doctrinal principles. It was because you knew the Father through the work of the Son and the Son was shaping you to be like the Father. What religion appeals to is our need for approval by God and people by conforming our behavior to the expectations of whatever religious system we get engaged with. Wow. Like you said, whether it was, and Christianity is one. My wake up call to this: I was in Israel 15 years ago. We had a we had a Jewish guide, and there were people on our bus that were obnoxiously trying to win him to Christ. They would mockingly make statements about him not believing in the Messiah while he's telling us about Jesus at the Pool of Siloam. And on the last day, I was the teaching guide on this tour. He was the tour guide, and the last day, I was out of the bus with him. Really, hear this. If you hear nothing else tonight, hear this. I asked him, I said, have these people been offensive to you by what they've said? <laughs> he just laughed. He said, no. I said, really? He said, no. He said, I've been doing this for 30 years. He said, I, everyone tries to convert me. The Orthodox Jews, the Reformed Jews, the Christians, the Muslims, the, the uh, Mormons, the, the Buddhists. He said, everybody wants to convert me. He said, you know why none of it hits anywhere? And I said, no, why is that? He said, come here. We walk out to the street and he points to a synagogue down the street a little bit. See a synagogue? That's ours. See that cross down the street over there? That's yours. See the dome over there? That's theirs. Take the Star of David, the cross, the dome off of it. Underneath, it's really just the same thing. And he said this, if you, you would think if one of us was following the living God, it would look different. Now that's a statement. You would think if we were following the living God, it would look different. And I... I think it did. I think the early church did look different. They didn't have the things that we consider essential to share the faith together. 
And uh, I think we're coming at a day when people who, who've read the shack, so you don't want to go to church anymore, or he loves me, when God fills up what religion seeks to satisfy, you live different. And what the, the greatest fear I had as a pastor, if you really feel free people to follow Jesus, they'll become these Lone Ranger independent Christians. The reality is no one knows the father I know that doesn't want to be part of the family he's building in the earth. But that family looks differently than some side we've been talking. When people stop practicing religion together and start sharing a journey of faith together, then those forms can take on even some of the same forms or different forms. But then we experience what Jesus always meant for us to experience, which is not live under the oppressive burden of religious obligation, but live as beloved sons and daughters of the Most High.